Section 10 of Passages from the Life of a Philosopher. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Avaii in June 2019. Passages from the Life of a Philosopher by Charles Babbage. Section 10 of The Analytical Engine, Part 2 a finite machine may make unlimited calculation thus it appears that the whole of the conditions which enable a finite machine to make calculations of unlimited extent are fulfilled in the analytical engine the means i have adopted are uniform i have converted the infinity of space which was required by the conditions of the problem into the infinity of time the means i have employed are in daily use in the art of weaving patterns it is accomplished by systems of cards punched with various holes strung together to any extent which may be demanded two large boxes the one empty and the other filled with perforated cards are placed before and behind a polygonal prism which revolves at intervals upon its axis and advances through a short space after which it immediately returns a card passes over the prism just before each stroke of the shuttle the cards that have passed hang down until they reach the empty box placed to receive them into which they arrange themselves one over the other when the box is full another empty box is placed to receive the coming cards and a new full box on the opposite side replaces the one just emptied as the suspended cards on the entering side are exactly equal to those on the side at which the others are delivered they are perfectly balanced so that whether the formulae to be computed be excessively complicated or very simple the force to be exerted always remains nearly the same discussions at turin in eighteen forty i received from my friend m planat a letter pressing me strongly to visit turin at the then approaching meeting of italian philosophers in that letter m planat stated that he had inquired anxiously of many of my countrymen about the power and mechanism of the analytical engine he remarked that from all the information he could collect the case seemed to stand thus hitherto the legislative department of our analysis has been all-powerful the executive all feeble your engine seems to give us the same control over the executive which we have hitherto only possessed over the legislative department considering the exceedingly limited information which could have reached my friend respecting the analytical engine I was equally surprised and delighted at his exact provisions of its powers. Even at the present moment I could not express more clearly, and in fewer terms, its real object. I collected together such of my models, drawings, and notations as I conceived to be best adapted to give an insight into the principles and mode of operating of the analytical engine. On mentioning my intention to my excellent friend, the late Professor McCullough, he resolved to give up a trip to the Tyrol and join me at Turin. We met at Turin at the appointed time, and as soon as the first bustle of the meeting had a little abated, I had the great pleasure of receiving at my own apartments for several mornings Messrs. Planat, Menabrea, Mosotti, McCullough, Plantamour and others of the most eminent geometers and engineers of Italy. Around the room were hung the formula, the drawings, notations, and other illustrations which I had brought with me. I began on the first day to give a short outline of the idea. My friends asked from time to time further explanations of parts I had not made sufficiently clear. M. Planat had at first proposed to make notes, in order to write an outline of the principles of the engine. But his own laborious pursuits induced him to give up this plan, and to transfer the task to a younger friend of his, M. Menabrea, who had already established his reputation as a profound analyst. 
these discussions were of great value to me in several ways i was thus obliged to put into language the various views i had taken and i observed the effect of my explanations on different minds my own ideas became clearer and i profited by many of the remarks made by my highly gifted friends mosotti's difficulty one day mosotti who had been unavoidably absent from the previous meeting when a question of great importance had been discussed again joined the party well aware of the acuteness and rapidity of my friend's intellect i asked my other friends to allow me five minutes to convey to professor mosotti the substance of the preceding sitting after putting a few questions to mosotti himself he placed before me distinctly his greatest difficulty he remarked that he was now quite ready to admit the power of mechanism over numerical and even over algebraical relations to any extent but he added that he had no conception how the machine could perform the act of judgment sometimes required during an analytical inquiry when two or more different courses presented themselves especially as the proper course to be adopted could not be known in many cases until all the previous portion had been gone through solution of equations i then inquired whether the solution of a numerical equation of any degree by the usual but very tedious proceeding of approximation would be a type of the difficulty to be explained he at once admitted that it would be a very eminent one for the sake of perspicuity and brevity i shall confine my present explanation to possible roots i then mentioned the successive stages number of operation cards used one a ascertain the number of possible roots by applying sturm's theorem to the coefficients two b find a number greater than the greatest root three c substitute the powers of ten commencing with that next greater than the greatest root and diminishing the powers by unity at each step for the value of x in the given equation continue this until the sign of the resulting number changes from positive to negative the index of the last power of ten call it n which is positive expresses the number of digits in that part of the root which consists of whole numbers call this index n plus one four d substitute successively for x in the original equation zero times ten to the power of n one times ten to the power of n two times ten to the power of n three times ten to the power of n etc until nine times ten to the power of n until a change of sign occurs in the result the digit previously substituted will be the first figure of the root sought five e transform the original equation into another whose roots are less by the number thus found the transformed equation will have a real root the digit less than ten to the power of n six f substitute one times ten to the power of n minus one two times ten to the power of n minus one three times ten to the power of n minus one etc successively for the root of this equation until a change of sign occurs in the result as in process four this will give the second figure of the root this process of alternately finding a new figure in the root and then transforming the equation into another as in process four and five must be carried on until as many figures as are required whether whole numbers or decimals are arrived at seven g the root thus found must now be used to reduce the original equation to one dimension lower eight h this new equation of one dimension lower must now be treated by sections three four five six and seven until the new root is found nine i the repetition of sections seven and eight must go on until all the roots have been found 
now it will be observed that professor mosotti was quite ready to admit at once that each of these different processes could be performed by the analytical machine through the medium of properly arranged sets of jacquard cards his real difficulty consisted in teaching the engine to know when to change from one set of cards to another and back again repeatedly at intervals not known to the person who gave the orders the dimensions of the algebraic equation being known the number of arithmetical processes necessary for sturm's theorem is consequently known a set of operation cards can therefore be prepared these must be accompanied by a corresponding set of variable cards which will represent the columns in the store on which the several coefficients of the given equation and the various combinations required amongst them are to be placed the next stage is to find a number greater than the greatest root of the given equation there are various courses for arriving at such a number any one of these being selected another set of operation and variable cards can be prepared to execute this operation now as this second process invariably follows the first the second set of cards may be attached to the first set and the engine will pass on from the first to the second process and again from the second to the third process but here a difficulty arises successive powers of ten are to be substituted for x in the equation until a certain event happens a set of cards may be provided to make the substitution of the highest power of ten and similarly for the others but on the occurrence of a certain event namely the change of a sign from plus to minus this stage of the calculation is to terminate now at a very early period of the inquiry i had found it necessary to teach the engine to know when any numbers it might be computing pass through zero or infinity the passage through zero can be easily ascertained thus let the continually decreasing number which is being computed be placed upon a column of wheels in connection with a carrying apparatus after each process this number will be diminished until at last a number is subtracted from it which is greater than the number expressed on those wheels thus let it be five zeros five zeros five zeros zero zero four two three subtract five zeros five zeros five zeros zero zero five one one to result five nines five nines five nines nine 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 one two now in every case of a carriage becoming due a certain lever is transferred from one position to another in the cage next above it consequently in the highest cage of all say the fiftieth in the analytical engine an arm will be moved or not moved accordingly as the carriages do or do not run up beyond the highest wheel this arm can of course make any change which has previously been decided upon in the instance we have been considering it would order the cards to be turned on to the next set if we wish to find when any number which is increasing exceeds in the number of its digits the number of wheels on the columns of the machine the same carrying arm can be employed hence any directions may be given which the circumstances require it will be remarked that this does not actually prove even in the analytical engine of fifteen figures that the number computed has passed through infinity but only that it has become greater than any number of fifty places of figures there are however methods by which any machine made for a given number of figures may be made to compute the same formulae with double or any multiple of its original number but the nature of this work prevents me from explaining that method it may here be remarked that in the process the cards employed to make the substitutions of the powers of ten are operation cards they are therefore quite independent of the numerical values substituted 
hence the same set of operation cards which order the substitutions one times ten to the power of n will if backed order the substitution of two times ten to the power of n etc we may therefore avail ourselves of a mechanism for backing these cards and call it into action whenever the circumstances themselves require it the explanation of m mosotti's difficulty is this mechanical means have been provided for backing or advancing the operation cards to any extent there exist means of expressing the conditions under which these various processes are required to be called into play it is not even necessary that two courses only should be possible any number of courses may be possible at the same time and the choice of each may depend upon any number of conditions general menabria's description it was during these meetings that my highly valued friend m menabria collected the materials for that lucid and admirable description which he subsequently published in the bibliothèque universelle de genève tome sixty one october eighteen forty two the elementary principles on which the analytical engine rests were thus in the first instance brought before the public by general menabria the countess of lovelace's notes some time after the appearance of his memoir on the subject in the bibliothèque universelle de genève the late countess of lovelace informed me that she had translated the memoir of menabria footnote ada augusta countess of lovelace only child of the poet byron End footnote. i asked why she had not herself written an original paper on a subject with which she was so intimately acquainted to this lady lovelace replied that the thought had not occurred to her i then suggested that she should add some notes to menabria's memoir an idea which was immediately adopted we discussed together the various illustrations that might be introduced i suggested several but the selection was entirely her own so also was the algebraic working out of the different problems except indeed that relating to the numbers of bernouilli which i had offered to do to save lady lovelace the trouble this she sent back to me for an amendment having detected a grave mistake which i had made in the process the notes of the countess of lovelace extend to about three times the length of the original memoir their author has entered fully into almost all the very difficult and abstract questions connected with the subject these two memoirs taken together furnish to those who are capable of understanding the reasoning a complete demonstration that the whole of the developments and operations of analysis are now capable of being executed by machinery various applications there are various methods by which these developments are arrived at one by the aid of the differential and integral calculus two by the combinatorial analysis of hindenburg three by the calculus of derivations of arbogast each of these systems professes to expand any function according to any laws theoretically each method may be admitted to be perfect but practically the time and attention required are in the greater number of cases more than the human mind is able to bestow consequently upon several highly interesting questions relative to the lunar theory some of the ablest and most indefatigable of existing analysts are at variance the analytical engine is capable of executing the laws prescribed by each of these methods at one period i examined the combinatorial analysis and also took some pains to ascertain from several of my german friends who had had far more experience of it than myself whether it could be used with greater facility than the differential system they seemed to think that it was more readily applicable to all the usual wants of analysis i have myself worked with the system of arbogast and if i were to decide from my own limited use of the three methods i should 
for the purposes of the analytical engine, prefer the calcul de derivation. As soon as an analytical engine exists, it will necessarily guide the future course of the science. Whenever any result is sought by its aid, the question will then arise, by what course of calculation can these results be arrived at by the machine in the shortest time? In the drawings I have prepared, I proposed to have a thousand variables, upon each of which any number not having more than fifty figures can be placed. This machine would multiply fifty figures by other fifty and print the product of one hundred figures or it would divide any number having 100 figures by any other of 50 figures and print the quotient of 50 figures. Allowing but a moderate velocity for the machine, the time occupied by either of these operations would be about one minute. The whole of the numerical constants throughout the works of Laplace, Planard, Le Verrier, Hansen, and other eminent men whose indefatigable labors have brought astronomy to its present advanced state, might easily be recomputed. They are but the numerical coefficients of the various terms of functions developed according to certain series. In all cases in which these numerical constants can be calculated by more than one method, it might be desirable to compute them by several processes, until frequent practice shall have confirmed our belief in the infallibility of mechanism. Errors of Tables The great importance of having accurate tables is admitted by all who understand their uses, but the multitude of errors really occurring is comparatively little known. Dr. Lardner, in the Edinburgh Review, has made some very instructive remarks on this subject. I shall mention two within my own experience. These are selected because they occurred in works where neither care nor expense were spared on the part of the government to ensure perfect accuracy. It is, however, but just to the eminent men who presided of the preparation of these works for the press to observe that the real fault lay not in them, but in the nature of things. In 1828, I lent the government an original manuscript of the table of logarithmic sines, cosines, etc., computed to every second of the quadrant, in order that they might have it compared with Taylor's logarithms, fourth tomb, 1795, of which they possessed a considerable number of copies. Nineteen errors were thus detected and a list of these errata was published in the Nautical Almanac for 1832. These may be called 19 errata of the first order, 1832. An error being detected in one of these errata, in the following Nautical Almanac we find an erratum of the errata in Nautical Almanac 1832, 1833. But in this very erratum of the second order, a new mistake was introduced larger than any of the original mistakes. In the year next following there ought to have been found erratum in the erratum of the errata in Nautical Almanac 1832, 1834. In the Table de la Lune by Monsieur P. A. Hansen, Fourth Tomb, 1857, published at the expense of the English government, under the direction of the Astronomer Royal, is to be found a list of errata amounting to 155. In the 21st of these original errata, there have been found three mistakes. These are duly noted in a newly printed list of errata discovered during computations made with them in the Nautical Almanac, so that we now have the errata of an erratum of the original work. This list of errata from the office of the Nautical Almanac is larger than the original list. The total number of errors at present, 1862, discovered in Hansen's Tables of the Moon, amounts to above 350. In making these remarks I have no intentions of imputing the slightest blame to the Astronomer Royal, who, like other men, cannot avoid submitting to inevitable fate. The only circumstance which is really extraordinary is that, 
when it was demonstrated that all tables are capable of being computed by machinery and even when a machine existed which computed certain tables that the astronomer royal did not become the most enthusiastic supporter of an instrument which could render such invaluable service to his own science in the supplementary notices of the astronomical society number no. nine volume twenty three page two hundred fifty nine eighteen sixty three there occurs a paper by m g de pontacoulon in which forty-nine numerical coefficients relative to the longitude latitude and radius vector of the moon are given as computed by planat delaunay and pontecoulon the computations of planat and pontecoulon agree in thirteen cases those of delaunay and pontecoulon in two and in the remaining thirty-four cases they all three differ remarks on analysis i am unwilling to terminate this chapter without reference to another difficulty now arising which is calculated to impede the progress of analytical science the extension of analysis is so rapid its domain so unlimited and so many inquirers are entering into its fields that a variety of new symbols have been introduced formed on no common principles many of these are merely new ways of expressing well-known functions unless some philosophical principles are generally admitted as the basis of all notation there appears a great probability of introducing the confusion of babel into the most accurate of all languages a few months ago i turned back to a paper in the philosophical transactions eighteen forty four to examine some analytical investigations of great interest by an author who has thought deeply on the subject it related to the separation of symbols of operation from those of quantity a question peculiarly interesting to me since the analytical engine contains the embodiment of that method there was no ready sufficient and simple mode of distinguishing letters which represented quantity from those which indicated operation to understand the results the author had arrived at it became necessary to read the whole memoir although deeply interested in the subject i was obliged with great regret to give up the attempt for it not only occupied much time but placed too great a strain on the memory whenever i am thus perplexed it has often occurred to me that the very simple plan i have adopted in my mechanical notation for lettering drawings might be adopted in analysis on the geometrical drawings of machinery every piece of matter which represents framework is invariably denoted by an upright letter whilst all letters indicating movable parts are marked by inclined letters the analogous rule would be let all letters indicating operations or modifications be expressed by upright letters whilst all letters representing quantity should be represented by inclined letters the subject of the principles and laws of notation is so important that it is desirable before it is too late that the scientific academies of the world should each contribute the results of their own examination and conclusions and that some congress should assemble to discuss them perhaps it might be still better if each academy would draw up its own views illustrated by examples and have a sufficient number printed to send to all other academies End of section ten.